All right, and we are back. Do what do you got here, Caleb? Me? Oh, uh, I was going to ask if you thought Reed or Corey had a faster goldfish. I think it's got to be Reed, right? Like the the prowess deck really is if when left unopposed, it, it really does kill on turn three or four. You know, almost every game without question. You know, turn three a it, lot, honestly. Big agree. That's been my impression as well. And like Corey's ragabans are might eat some lava darts, but Ooh, yeah. Um, you know, Corey also has some disruption, right? And some interaction there with the unholy heats and what one for sure. Yeah. I mean, the thing about prowess is like, if you can kill that first creature, it's definitely not that fast, you know, but when the first, when the creatures live and they kind of snowball and get really, really big, really, really fast, you know, it's definitely a, a dance back and forth, but Corey has a great draw here, obviously. Yeah. Two great openers. Corey on the play, bringing out the rag of in. Reed electing not to play a one drop instead choosing to. Lava Dart said Ragavan, of course. It looked interesting to see uh, Corey not play the Mox. Mox would have been on. Obviously, nothing to cast off it immediately, but could have, like, you know, repped a, a Lightning Bolt or an Unholy Heat or something like that with the uh, Ragavan's legendary status. But Ragavan, uh, not long for this world. Lava Dart. I do love Lava Dart. That's one of my favorite additions to the modern format. I'm just a huge fan of that card. I'm, uh, I'm against it because I lose to it a lot. <laughs> I, I i do too to be fair it, it does kill a lot of decks that i like to play but it's just like a classic old card you know sacrificing your resources for some small marginal gain it's just it's just sweet yeah big agree Corey passing the turn here read on taps draws a mishra's bobble yeah, I mean, two one drops here. I mean, obviously, like the the breach there. If the game goes to does it go longer? Now was a bobble. Also, the preordain is kind of cool. Uh, definitely going to be interesting to see like what kind of stance is going to be taken here. Obviously, kind of re was forced into taking the defensive stance on turn one with the turn rag event on the play. If she have to kill it, but yep. now re gets to unload here. But how far will he go? It's going to be cool to see. Yeah, actually, a lot of sequencing decisions there, right? Like you could miss his bobble self before cracking, deciding if you want to crack the wooded foothills or not before you play your second land. Um, looks like Reed's holding it for the next turn to get two prowess triggers instead of just one. Going for the big bank up turn, you're trying to unload it all at once, and there isn't that much removal in Corey's deck. So you know, there's there's the bolts, and it's really not too much else. You know, maybe a heat here or there, but um, so possibly big damage next turn. It's a fairy looking kind of awkward here too. Fairy's a little awkward. You can bounce the soul scar mage, and you know, kind of fog it for a turn. Yeah, Reed re balls those play, I suppose. Um. But then, and then there's a flame here as the other option. I'm not, I'm not sure which I would do. We're not seeing a saga play. Yeah, two life for the the land is pretty interesting here. You know, Corey's saying he's not going to have time to activate the saga at this point, so he wants to wait. Maybe, maybe one ring next turn, kind of just keep buying more time. Thirteen is, you know, it's it's, it's a decent amount, but that could, could, could go down pretty quickly here. Another Swift Spear and, a, and another Lava Dart. And it's starting to look... Yeah. It's starting to look rough. Good for... Uh, thankfully for Corey, though. Reed's hand's a little slower. You know, some card draw. The Breach... Again, Breach is a card you definitely want to draw later or not earlier. Uh, so kind of rotting a little bit right now, but might be relevant in a few turns. Uh, and then we got to see what all these cantrips uh, are going to turn up. Preordain number one. How do you feel about Preordain? You like that card? As in uh, being unbanned in modern now? Yeah, all that stuff. Do you like casting it? Do you like it being unbanned? How do you feel? Um, I haven't cast one in a while. I think it's fine, honestly. I think the 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 card quality's got modern so high lately that like it seems perfectly reasonable. Um, it's definitely you know it. I think it's like the kind of thing where like if it's facilitating combo decks, it can be a little rough, but in decks like this or more fair decks, it's totally cool. I think it's fine. Happy to see it back. Cool, cool. Played that card a lot in standard. Or period in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like didn't realize how good we had it then. You know, we had these ponders, these period in, just kind of hanging out, not really, you know, not really thinking about what, what was going to be uh, in modern. I actually splashed for preordain once and like mono white pure steel. <laughs> How sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Swift spear coming in. Three damage. Yeah, not clearing to fairy. 
Yeah, it kind of makes sense, honestly. Like the Teferi is not going to matter for a few more turns and likely won't matter in this game, probably, uh, if, if things go Reed's way. So setting up for the W. Yeah, a lot of cards next turn. Obviously, uh, you know, the dart in the graveyard, the preordain, more cards to see, a bunch of triggers. Uh one ring will buy some time, but this could also buy time for Reed to set up the Underworld Breach and kind of go that route. I think a, a lightning bolt is pretty high on Reed's wish list right now. It still has another preordain and some prowess triggers to find it. Let's take a look. Start there. Also, of course, to ferry. Uh, does not wear the ring, so is uh, is vulnerable here. Is going to die one way or another for sure because the creatures can't do anything else. The DRC can't even forget to not attack. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> it's got to go somewhere. Might as well go say hi to Teferi. Yeah, finding a bolt huge here for Reed because once you have access to that first bolt, now the Underworld Breach can start bolting over and over and over again, which is a huge part of the uh, the, the next kind of mid to late game win condition. And uh, see what turns up here though. And there it is. Found it. Preordain's very good at that. <laughs> Bye, Teferi. You gotta make sure Teferi's dead. You know, get the second, that second creature in there. Really, really make sure. No doubt about it. Double tap. Gone. Also pretty scary for uh, for Cord to even tap this ring again. You know, there really is like... With four creatures in play, uh, can Corey combo from his spot? Not without the um, the self mill card, right? Yeah, he would need station and a mox and a lot, a lot more <laughs> things. A lot, yeah, yeah. So a one drop pretty... that could be lightning bolted. Yeah, for sure. So looking pretty good yeah. for uh, for Reed. Absolutely, I think I think Corey was really looking for another one ring. Yeah, that makes sense. Try and make the extra make sure land drop and the saga goes off. Maybe you can find you know mana there, uh, find a mox, but yeah, potentially or, even favored with one more turn and you know another four cards or whatever. Yeah, I mean with the with the breach, I mean Reed has the bolt now too. Uh, if there was an end step, well, I guess the the ring would go off. I guess so. And can you? There was no way to, to get through the the ring protection with the the bolt and the breach. So looking for the ring and not finding it. And some things that should not have been lost. <laughs> oh my god. What? I, I love Lord of the Rings. You don't love Lord of the Rings? I do love Lord of the Rings. All right, all right, all right. Just check it. <laughs> I just felt like shouting, nerd! <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fair. <laughs> I'll accept it. We used to do, uh, I used to have the Lord of the Rings audiobooks. I used to be driving, you know, Dan Jessup, Andrew Jessup, and Pete Ingram to all the SCGs back in the day. And that was my, like, late night stay awake. And it was, like, audiobook with music and sound effects and everything. And they'd be like, oh, my God, it's a freaking Lord of the Rings again. It's, like, 3 in the morning. I'm freaking driving. And <laughs> it's some road in Pennsylvania. You're driving, like, yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. They, they, they're not going to, like, you know, say turn it off. But they're just like, oh. Went on a lot of road trips as a kid, and I loved falling asleep to audiobooks. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, really good. Corey, like only one mana away here from getting the second ring down, right? Between Ragavan, double Mox. Yeah, uh, Mox playing that little little Lotus Petal roll here, but still a little bit short. Oh, oh, are we? Uh, are we? Can we breach and Ooh. then use that to get enough Mox? I don't think we can, right? With only six yeah. cards in the graveyard. Yeah, two escapes. Um, the breach. Yeah, the two, breach costing two is is just too much. I'm probably. I'm curious to see though. I know Corey is a master of a stack, Corey. This play of his deck literally for the last like year and a half. You know, him and Ross Merriam just over and over and over again. But we got the old Dart Ski. Don't forget about Dart. Taking out the Ragaban and the mana. That's awesome. Might have just been seeing what uh what Reed would do there. When in doubt, cast lava dart. We got blood moons coming in on Reed's side. You good against Urza's saga. Yeah, it's pretty nasty too, because even just color wise, like, you know, turning off the blue, or whatever, is pretty easy. There are a few islands, but like, you know, not always easy, easy to uh, fetch the duel. And then, yeah, hitting Saga is also huge. Uh, this seems like it matchup wise favors Reed pretty well, honestly. Yeah. 
we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of hate come in here. Graveyard oh, hate yeah. on top of the the creature burn spells that are already in there. We have yeah, some the... spell pierces and what what, and uh, Corey's bringing in a whole mishmash of things. Got a yeah, the problem fury. is I don't know if if Corey so Corey's bringing in some pretty good cards. You have prismatic endings and furies, kind of like things to stay alive. Flame slash, but. I don't know if, if Corey now he's diluting uh, his deck a little bit and like between all the hate cards that Reed is bringing in, like will Corey be able to stabilize enough until Reed can iteration and play hate cards so on and so forth and just kind of full find the win eventually. And like Corey's going down on a ring, but rings kind of like the plan if you're killing things. So it's going to be an interesting game two and three. The dynamics definitely going to change a lot. Yeah, they both both decks have a ton more interaction post board. Yeah, game is slow down a ton, and the, those breaches might matter more on on Reed side for sure. On both sides, if both players are just like killing each other's things. Yeah, definitely. If you get into that sort of game, difference is that on Reed side we have those slow guide lanterns. Looks like we're going to be bringing in two, and then there's no graveyard hate on uh, on Corey's side. So I would say Corey's uh, breaches are better, uh, but Reeds are going to be unopposed. Yeah, I agree with that. Of course, die roll is pretty big here too. You know, prowess, you know, just like burn, like deck that really, really, really wants to go first and, uh, and be on the play. And as you saw, I, I mean, that game, you know, if 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 Corey plays Charlotte Ragavan, it's almost impossible for Reed to play a one drop. You know, Reed kind of just has to kill the Ragavan, which yeah. puts the, the the prowess deck significantly behind and also on the draw behind too. It wasn't enough that game for Corey to take it down, but it's a it's a major major distinction. And now Corey has to win at least one game on the draw, which is going to be pretty, 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 pretty difficult. Yep. Not lights out, of course. Right. I'm going to stumble or have a threat light draw. I find those are the, the, the draws that I really want to face when I'm playing against Prowess. I really yeah. want them to just like have like one or two threats, like kill both of them, and then they like spin their wheels for a while. For sure, that's and that's the kind of weakness of prowess as opposed to like a deck like burn, where the burn deck wants to get a few shots with the creatures that don't matter anymore. The prowess deck is very reliant on its creatures. You know, if they if those first few creatures die, they kind of just draw cards and they aren't making that damage output from casting their spells. They're just kind of casting spells. Or you dropping to six? That's uh. I I think dropping to five looking at yeah, this. <laughs> that's a pretty ugly six. Uh, blue, blue sandwich between two Urza sagas. That's a tough okay. one. Okay. Reed's hands looking pretty excellent. Double one drop, oh, yeah. interactive spell, card draw spell, perfect mana. It's a nice one. No removal on Reed's side, but but you're right. Uh, we got some some velocity, some pressure. Two yeah, lands, and, perfect. You um, got an answer or two on Corey's side, but and I mean, I don't think this is a bad mold of five. I think what sure. Corey is deciding is whether to keep both sagas or not. That's tough. Uh, keeping both sagas, though, then the flame is a little hard to cast. Also, might just need the need the, uh, the, the the raw cards to get back out of the five card hole. I, I think if you keep both sagas, you just don't keep the flame. Maybe that's fair. Like it's just like the plan now. It's like this is my best chance of winning. Looks like that's what he's jamming. It's quite good. Although it's a little awkward to go Saga and Saga, obviously, because like you can't use them both to their full potential. Yeah, you missed one, time but, but then they, um, I mean, they're both tutoring more artifacts. They're juicing sure. each other up still. Sure. All right, what's the turn one play for Reed here? We have Channeler or Sis Spear. Damage or more luck. It's going to go for damage. That show respire bluffs interesting. Yeah, with the bobble in hand, that is a lot. I might overvalue that. The, the bobble self check. Even just like saving it for a check next turn, maybe, you know, like there's no like you know, you can just kind of size it up later. I don't know. Interesting them. Does add a land to the graveyard up, obviously, like that could happen next turn regardless. So Belvoir Channel is pretty nice here though. Drawing shadows here for Corey, not super exciting. Uh, you know, it could definitely a piece of the puzzle as far as like making a big life linker, but don't really want to draw it. You know, I kind of want to tutor that one up. So being down on five cards that is naturally drawing this kind of like awkward tutor card is uh, certainly not ideal. Rita getting to bend double spell pierce with a spell pierce in hand. 
is uh, pretty good for him. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very good. Interesting, yeah, Reed brought in all four spell pierces, and that's, that's kind of a lot. I mean, that is fairly proactive. It's not necessarily always easy to leave mana up, and like a lot of the important cards in Corey's like are creatures too. Uh, oof, oof. Ooh, boy. <laughs> if you're a Corey Baumeister fan, uh, go go watch some TV or something. That was the, a backbreaking draw for Reed. Oofta, as we say in the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, and there isn't really even a way out for Corey here. It's you, you fetch an island, but then cut off of white stone, double stone rain. Ooh, yeah. Let's get a 2 2. So obviously, there is a 2 2 and is still Shadow Spear here. I'm sorry, I, I, I misheard you. What'd you say? Oh, so it does get a 2 2. So there is oh, a, still the, a yeah, yeah. The 2 2 and the Shadow Spear. I mean, it's sort of a plan, I guess, you know. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, there's enchantment, sorcery, land, so no delirium yet. Just gonna pass up the old golem and just try and uh, try and gain some life. I think I would have made every decision that Corey did, except for like, I think I might have run out the other Urza Saga last turn. Regardless, I would have gotten equally destroyed this game. Oh man. I think I would have not drawn the Shadow Spear and drawn a more useful ah. card. That's what I would have done personally, I think. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. This is a massacre. <laughs> it was it's important to note though that that Reed is off of blue mana. So it's the true. Blood Moon is not, you know, completely one sided. And there are two blue spells in hand. Uh, but these Shadowers are hitting pretty hard. I mean. If Corey could draw an artifact or two, it's funny how like I think Mox Opal, or just like a, any random artifact, is actually like a fine draw here. Get the it's contract to a four four. Yeah, Bobble, you know, just something Bobble. up. Bobble could turn on Delirium too. Oh yeah, it's true. Also, does this Flame Slash? Yeah, that's not bad. The fact that Urza's Saga can't even come into play and make a mana before it dies, it can't even Lotus Petal is yeah. is so brutal <laughs> for sure. I mean, get a little, little amount of morphos here. So Reed does have blue now, um, or at least next turn. Pretty relevant here. All right, we're gonna see a spell pierce. So Reed, Reed's gonna gonna go for spell pierce over express federation for his one shot blue of, of mana metamorphos. Gotta keep us threats alive. Although I will say this this golem is doing some work. You know, gaining three every turn and attacking for three is you know it's just a free lightning helix and eleven to twelve. You Oof. know. Most creatures die, but ooh, yeah, as a bolt. All right, Oof. Remember how important I said that golem was? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, that's uh, it. That's everything. Yep. That's the. Yeah. <laughs> Big surveils here, too. <laughs> Tough. For a second there, I was like, all right, maybe like there's actually a little bit of a path here, but gonna, gonna knock things out. Yeah, kill a thing, untap, kill another thing, have your lifelinker oh. hit. Oh, yeah. Was this just lethal? Three, six, nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven. I think it's oh with a dart too. Yep, looks like it is. Good old lava dart. The card's so messed up in this deck. Yeah, it, it really is. You know, the the be being able to just churn out spell after spell for free is just so awesome. Even you know that it looks like one damage ends up being five. It's just great. So.